today we're going to talk about the money mindset. What is the money mindset? Why you need to develop it and how it can put money in your pocket 24 7 365. Yeah. Hey, this is Glenn Cameron, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu University, where your real financial education begins. If you want to start a business, if you want to learn about credit, if you want to learn about generational wealth, slap, spank, or lick that subscribe button. Now, let's get into it. I've been thinking. I've been thinking a lot. I was going to shut this company down for the last two weeks of the year. And I gave it a lot of thought. And, you know, I was going to, and then it just, it didn't feel right. And it was like, it, it's not making sense because it's making money. And I felt that if I had shut it down, and, you know, I'll talk about, I was off Christmas. I took Christmas off. I'm going to take New Year's off. But the day after New Year's, we'll be open. The day after Christmas, we were open. And we had some large sales. And it kind of sets up a paradigm for next holiday season because in theory, it sounds great. Everyone takes off. We shut the company down. But the problem with that is you now have to reinvigorate, recrank up the company, re-energize and start it all over again. And that right there, from what I've experienced when I was in my professional life and my corporate life, that was like a six to eight week re-jump, a re-ignition, a re-spark. And I was like, whoa, whoa, we've got momentum. Why would we shut down? I mean, it sounds nice. It feels good. But, you know, I believe in, you know, weekends off, you know, holiday, three-day weekends, four-day weekends. That's cool. But to literally take two weeks to shut the company down before, while the company is not even a year old, I think would have been foolhardy. It would have been misguided. And it would have been problematic. And I'm glad I didn't do it. And I thought about this and... I've been talking to a lot of people and I've been listening to traditional people, uh, people with jobs, uh, people who this is the only time of the year they can take off. And I started to come up with something. Many people hustle, build businesses out of necessity. They do not hustle or be very competitive or, or grind once the primary monetary need is met. The first thought is, let's take off. The first thought is vacation, treat myself, take some time off, kick back. And when your business is rolling, you have momentum, that's the worst thing you can do. And I listened to the people and I realized that many people don't have a foundation of what they do that gives them joy and energy and enthusiasm. They don't have that. So that first chance to <clears throat> be off, they're off. They're taking time off. They're, they're going on vacations. They're, they're traveling because what they do wears on them so much that they need every little break. And the thing is, the first rule of the money mindset is you never, ever stop hustling. You never stop hustling because what you do, if you want to take time off, is you build a business, you build systems so even though you're off in London like I was and still making money or like I'll be in London again probably four months from now, the system, the process is still making money when you're taking time away. If you don't build a system, if every time you shut your business down because you have to leave and you can't manage it, you can't watch it, each time you shut your business down, 
you lose momentum. And to use a scientific term, I'm going to see if I can look it up. And I'm going to explain this scientifically. Uh, the myth of multi. This is good. All right, here we go. All right, so let me bring you all to this. All right, make sure we are on the myth of multitasking. I'm going to leave this up here. You could check it out. But essentially, you don't multitask. You, you switch tasks. So if you're in the kitchen and you're cooking and then you're washing dishes, each time you go over to wash the dishes, your brain switches. You're not multitasking. Now, you're doing multi things because, like, say you put the chili on and it's cooking. Once you prep the chili and put it on, you're done. The stove is doing the work. You're not actually cooking anymore. You're just watching what's already been prepared. So you're not really multitasking. And each time you multitask, and I've learned this because I typically do one thing at a time, you lose momentum, you lose speed, you lose clarity, and you lose momentum. So if you are a self-employed hustler and every time you want to take a time off, to go out of town, to hang out with family, you must stop hustling and your money stops. If you do that three to four times a year, you could literally be costing yourself 50, 150, 200, 300, 400,000 dollars because of the lost productivity. So the first rule of hustling is you set up a system where you can always make money. Always, you do not take time off. I know for many people who want to talk about work-life balance and all this other stuff, there ain't no work-life balance. This is why if you're a young hustler, a young entrepreneur, you're 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, you need to go get it now. Because let's say you 16, you start building businesses. By the time you're, you know, you've got 10 years in the game, 15 years in the game, you're, you're 29 or 30. You're 25 or 30 years old. Because here's something else, too, and this really makes sense for having kids and getting married. Emotionally, none of us mature until we're 25 because our brain doesn't stop growing until we're 25. So if you take all of that energy, that youthful enthusiasm, and you put it in some kind of fun endeavor, something you like, something that's motivating you, and you do that for 10 years or 15 years, you can literally set up the rest of your life. You can set up the rest of the life of your kids. Plus, you also avoid this drama of code switching out of a job into a business after you married this woman and she expects you to have a job and benefits. Because, see, how you marry someone is a contract. So if you got a job, you got benefits, when you get married and you come home because you hate your job, and you tell your wife, I was like, look, boo, I want to start a business. And your wife, she loves you, but she knows that you don't have what it takes to run a business because you've never done it. So the fight ensues, and it's like, you don't have my back. You don't believe in me. And next thing you know, you're trying to start a business. Your marriage is rocky. You possibly get divorced. You're seeing your kids every other weekend, and you went back and got a job because you know how to run a business. What you need to do is do this stuff when you are single, when you do not have these responsibilities. I am all about teenage entrepreneurship. All my young dudes who watch this channel, you need to get your thing started and, and you're 13, you're 14, you're 15, you're 16, you're 17, you're 18, you're 19. You need to start. I don't listen to your parents. If you don't wanna go to college, don't go. If you start a business, 16, you go at it for three years, it fails. You're 19. You're better suited to go to college. You're more mature. So one of the things that and I see this, and I'm not picking on anyone, but this need to get away. Once you follow the second rule of the money mindset is to devote your attention to something that you're very determined to complete. You're very determined to do. Not necessarily your passion. Like, give you an example. 
How many of you have been part of a situation where you broke up with someone, male or woman, and all of a sudden, in the order to get some get back, they drop 30 pounds. They got promoted in their job. It's like when we were together, you really wasn't about the self-improvement. But because I rejected you, now all of a sudden, you you looking slim. You got that come get me dress on. You, you, you looking better than you ever did before. But you couldn't manage that kind of elevation when you were in the relationship. How many people have that happened to? You're just like, wait a minute. When you were with me, you were not really trying to put out like, what, what, who are you? People. And that's, that's determination. There ain't no passion. That's determination. It's like, um, matter of fact, I'm going to try to find this. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, how I lost 100 pounds. Turner's journey, I believe. Uh, let's see. I mean, it's an old one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find it because... I want you to see what determination, not passion, determination, uh, a chip on your shoulder will do. Oh, let's see. Is this it? What the? It's an old video. I'm going to try to find it. Boom. Here we go. Um, this, this, like, all right, I'm, it's just, this is really deep, and I'm going to explain some stuff to you. Okay. So, let's see. All right. Here she is. Uh, this was some years ago. And, you know, look at her. Husband was in the military. She was, like, trying to lose some weight and stuff. And her husband said, I don't want you. You're too fat. I actually sent her that. You know, she did this video. She's crying. She's boohooing. Now, look, you know, and she's talking all this stuff. Oh, no. We ain't there yet. Yeah, she went from that to that. And it was because of the termination of the pain and hurt that her ex-husband rejected her. Now, also, because she got very determined, she got a kid. And she did not gain the weight back even after having a child. I want you to think about this. Because she got motivated. She got determined, right? That's that get back. That's that chip on the shoulder. So when you are trying to do something, forget about your passion. Uh, somebody like, let's say someone in your family said, oh, you can't do that. You ain't got that entrepreneur. You should use that as fuel. It's like, oh, no. And you shouldn't be like, once you get like one or two steps and be like putting it on Facebook and showing. No, 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 no. You want to get so successful that they contact you. Like, wow, you really did that. That's determination. There ain't no passion and nothing like that. That's determination. That's that wound. That's that chip on that shoulder. You should use that. Because one of the things that I found out, and I was having a lot of conversations this holiday season with people, just talking to people, most people hustle out of necessity. And once that monetary need is met, they stop. And they stop their momentum. And they stop hustling and they stop doing the things that they need to do to be successful. I'm going to tell you something, and I'm not saying this to brag. I'm not saying this to boast. But I can retire tomorrow and have an annual income of about 90 Gs. But why would I do that when I'm only 51? That makes no sense. Travel the world. I travel the world. Um, hang out with friends. I hang out with friends. I do everything I want to do. 
and I still work. So for me, retirement is what I'm doing. I'm just going to get to a certain age where I'm going to slow it down, but I'll still come in the office. I'll still do stuff because growing up, I saw something. A lot of old people in my neighborhood, they dropped off around 60-something, 60 60-something, 60 maybe 70-something because they were sitting around. Now, I'm in a wealthy neighborhood. If you want to look it up, look up Mount Perrin, Georgia. Just go to Google the zip codes and look at the houses. I live a mile away from that street. I see these old people who have had access to money. They're 80 years old and they're jogging. They, they have part-time jobs. They don't need them. They have them because it keeps them young. It keeps them engaged. It, keeps, it gives them a reason to live. So all of you folks who like, I want to get a gang of money so I don't have to work. You are committing suicide. You are committing an act of, un, you don't love yourself. You think having a bunch of money and just sitting around doing whatever you want to do with no clear purpose, no clear plan. Now, if you want to get a bunch of money so you can go be a missionary in Africa, that works because you're still serving humanity. But just like um, a lot of these people who play video games, they're getting older and a lot of them are highly dysfunctional because they don't know how to relate to other people. So you always got to keep hustling. Now, some other things about the money mindset. You must always mentally seek abundance. If there is a car you want, if there's a house you want, you should not even look at, I can't get that. You should ask yourself, you should pull out a piece of paper and a pen and write up on the top of that sheet, how can I get this? How much service can I provide to my fellow man where I can get this? Not that it's too much because, you know, I was doing something and I realized that I've evolved to another place in my life and it, it just kind of slipped up on me. I was looking on Zillow because, you know, of the challenge that I gave myself. So I'm always out here looking at high level real estate. And I saw some stuff that my taste have changed. And it was just like, you know, it, it, it's the craziest thing. Like, let me show you. Let's go to, I think I'm logged in here. If I'm not, I don't think I'm logged in, but it won't matter. So, three, four, two. Uh, let's just go. North Side Drive, Atlanta. Really? Oh, crap. What What the? Okay, hold on. Uh, I was not in Zillow. It's, here we go. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. No, oh, that's new construction. That's not it. Here we go. <clears throat> so I was looking at this and it's big and it's beautiful, right? And it's a lovely home. It's, it's almost palatial, a lot of room. From the aesthetics, I don't like it. Not to say that, you know, if someone gave it to me, I would live in it, of course, but I actually don't like it. And it's not like it's a bad house. It's just a matter of taste. I don't. And this, the thing is, a few years ago, I would have loved to live in a home like this. I was all about the antique furniture and stuff. But I'm just like, no. And it hit me. Why? I don't like it because I know with determination, with hard work, I can get whatever I want. So when you get into that mindset, a lot of things change. You start to look at the world totally differently. It's not like I have to take that 
or I hope to take that, it is I know that if I do the right things, I can get that. And that is a very powerful and amazing feeling because when it hit me that I had became so picky that I was just like stuff that I would love to have. I'm just like, eh, that's not, a, you know, it's, it's not aesthetically pleasing to me. Now, one of the things that I did make an addition because I've been looking on is if I can find something that I can renovate. I'm open to that. And then, you know, like this furniture, that's a crescent table. I used to love that stuff. I can't, it's just like, it doesn't turn me on now. Now, I got to admit, I've never seen this before, but I think that bathroom's kind of funky. Because clearly, you got somebody with some style in here. But I'm looking at this stuff, and I'm like, nah, 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 nah. No, no, no. And, you know, and the thing is, I'm not looking at the prices. I'm looking at the house. I'm like, yeah, that's okay. But it ain't me. Do you understand when you get to a point where you develop your personal power, where you can look at something from the raw and go like, eh, I don't like it. Whether it's expensive or not, it, it doesn't matter. He's like, no, I don't like it. Well, I do like it. Now I'm going to show you what does turn me on. And this is why I've had to kind of switch up my thing. Uh, let's see. Because I'm not logged in, but I can do this. Let's see. All right. And go to two point. Let's see. Yeah, I guess. All right. And just go for. Oh, crap. All right. All right. It still brought them up. So I started to really look at some of this stuff and it made me question why did I like certain things to begin with? And it was because that's all that I could afford. When, and this is one of the things, and this is a money mindset rule. You must tell yourself, I can get what I want. Now, there are people out there who could have 50 million and they would live in a two or $300,000 house and be just as happy as they want to because that's what they really, really want. They have no need for a big palatial house. They have no desire for it. But every time you look at their passport, there's like four stamps from international destinations every month. Um, whatever you like, whatever you want to do for real, because you will find, and this is something else too that we'll find. When you get the stuff that you really want, you will find yourself smiling each time, and it will be a spontaneous smile each time you see it, you touch it, and you enjoy it. You will feel fulfilled. You'll feel comfortable. You, it, it's an amazing, amazing feeling. And part of that is the money mindset of abundance because when you look at abundance, and also there's timetables, because one of the things is, and most of all, your timetables are too short. I believe everybody here can have whatever they want if they're willing to serve enough people, if they're willing to put out enough effort, and they're willing to get away from these ridiculously compressed timetables of two, three months, a few weeks. When you adjust your timetables to three to 10 years, one, you take all of this incredible stress off of yourself and you start to see real results because you're like, okay, I got to put my head down. I got to work and I got to work this month, next month. I got to work this year, this year. I got to work. And then, you, you know, amazing things will happen in a year. Amazing things will happen in two years. Amazing things will happen in three years. But it's not going to happen in six months. This is one of the reasons, and I'm having this conversation, and I'm not going to turn this into a Bitcoin conversation. I'm going to turn this into why are so many people all over Bitcoin? And it's because they see it as their only way to make some real money. So it's not about the Bitcoin. It's about the money. It's about, hey, I can become a millionaire. Hey, I can make a lot of money doing this. So it's not even the Bitcoin. It's the opportunity 
and it's the hope and the desire that they can make a lot of money because most folks don't. I've gone through the income charts. I'll do it again. Most people in this country make between 25 and 42 grand a year as a single person. That's why household income is like 55,000. Let, let's, let's just check it out. Let's, let's actually see. Because one of the things you have to do when you do your search, you have to refine your search. Household, because you can't just go with household income. Household income, 2017. And all right, and you, you have to get to up to date statistics. And they're not like really okay. Now this is median income is thirty one thousand. The median income is forty six, right? You know, twenty five, because it depends on where you live. So the real median household income is fifty nine thousand dollars. That's two people or three people. Did you know? On your credit card application, if you have three or four people living in your house, and if you're not related, you could put that as your household income. Because you notice they say household income. They don't say your income. They say household income. Just, a, you know, it could be a little, it get you in a little trouble if, in, if you got one roommate whose house his income is like really high. But there are not this many people making seven figures. Uh, one of the things that we as online marketers, you know, people who have 10 years experience making money online and you're at a point where you're legitimately making six figures every year or seven figures or eight. And then all of your friends you hang out with, they're kind of the same boat. You develop this myopic viewpoint that you think everybody living like that. You're like these kids who grew up wealthy and just have no um uh, perspective of the rest of the world they think that every and i mean it's not like it's a malicious or evil process but they think everybody got money because they got money all their friends got money they really do because they've not been shown anything else so what happens because i'm constantly telling people in my little circle everybody ain't making that kind of money do you understand how hard it is to make thirty thousand dollars a month consistently it ain't easy. You know how hard it is to make $100,000 a month consistently? And you talk to people and they, they sell it to you as if it's just one, two, and three. And they forget to tell you that because, you know, one of the things that and I loved about my live experience was I'm in my head. So when I had these people here it, and asking me questions, it prompted me to pull more stuff out because – when you're just doing your thing, you're just doing your thing. You're not really aware. You you not you don't intentionally leave out important details because it's subconscious. And you're just putting out stuff because you'll hear like a YouTuber say, well, I, I list it um, every day. I, I look my keywords. And then you will go like, okay, so the fact that you are on a scale of 1 to 10 or a 20 has nothing to do with it. Oh, no, it's all about the hard work. Or the fact that you used to be hooked up with a YouTuber with 20 million subscribers and you started your, ch your channel and instantly got like a million subscribers because you were associated with them, but it was your hard work. Or like the guy I used to work with whose his father started this corporation 40-some years ago, gave it to him, and he actually walks around like the reason that he is where he is in life is because of his own efforts. These, this is what I call stupid human tricks. Because for you to humble yourself and say, well, the reason I'm here is because my father started this corporation four years ago. He gave it to me. He gave me a wonderful opportunity. I have to work hard to keep it, but without him, this wouldn't be happening. Oh, they ain't so say that. No, 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 no. Uh, the president of the United States, he's one of those people. A million dollar loan. A small million dollar loan. Get the fuck out of here. You got banking connections. You got property. And when he died, you got Hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm like, no, Donald. But once again, another thing about the money mindset is you must love the truth. Now, I have a feeling about cryptocurrency. 
but I am not so egotistical that I will not actually research it. Now, I had my writer write a piece about Ripple. And, you know, a lot of stuff that she wrote about, and I was like, Ripple's good, Ripple's good. And once again, do not go out and buy Ripple because I'm saying Ripple, don't do that. What I'm going to do on this other channel is come on like, hey, I'm going to Cameron. I have some understanding of cryptocurrency, but this channel is to enlighten me and this channel is to educate me and, and educate myself. I'll educate you because I don't really understand how a bunch of people around the world mining something and it has value. I subconsciously understand it, but in my heart, I'm like, that's kind of whack. It's like you just making up some money in your basement. I know that we have fiat currency. I know. But the thing is, that dollar is going to be good today. And it's going to be good for the next 20 years. It's going to be probably good even after I die. Cryptocurrency, I think it's going to come on. I think there will be a coin. But once again, I don't know. And I sold all mine. And you got people who, and one of the things I'm doing, I'm checking the price every day. And if you are buying Bitcoin, here's a tip. Get yourself up early in the morning and try to get your order in before 6 a.m. Because every morning is low. This morning, it dropped down to 12.01 or like 1250. Yeah. And now I think, let's see, let's check the price of Bitcoin. Let's see where it is now. So let's see. Price of Bitcoin. So it's 13. So um, maybe an $800 swing today. I don't know. But I'm telling you. And this is part of me educating myself. This is, you know, Bitcoin actually does some stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I was wrong. Bitcoin is this. But I don't think I'm wrong. Because it is struggling it is struggling. And also, let's talk about empirical stuff. Like, what time is it? It's after Christmas. Most common people are broke. And they're waiting on their tax refund. So we're going to get a lot of this foolish money out of the market. And that's what I'm waiting on. Because if Bitcoin, which keeps going down, which I think it will, I think it's going to go down to probably three grand. I know people are like, oh, no, it ain't going to. I think it is. Because without the foolish money in it, Without the crazy money in it, without people going out getting mortgages to buy Bitcoin when it's $19,000. With that money gone, we're going to see what Bitcoin do because it's going to be gone for about two, three months. Until people start getting their tax refunds, refunds. But one of the things that you should do to get the money mindset is always think, how can I serve my fellow man? If you focus on money and money only your soul will be damned because you are just 100% all about you. This is not about other people because the thing is, as much as I talk stuff, I want my people to be successful. I want people who join Hustle Camp to be successful. I want them to do the work, and I know that I got to get the right people to make that happen because if I just get anybody, Steve, Bill, Sue, whatever, um, Sue, she may do a course and then she just drop it because, you know, she, she trying to get that easy come up. Or Bill, he may stick with it. I don't know. But you got to serve a lot of people. And this is another reason that the cryptocurrency thing has a major flaw. It doesn't serve a lot of people because you got people who are in it, who are hyping it up because that serves them. But they're not serving a lot of people. So in simple terms, the money mindset is every day you wake up and you ask yourself this one question. How can I serve my fellow man today? If you ask yourself that question every day and you take action, you will have more money than you ever need. Seriously. Is it going to kick in like immediately? Nope. Depending on where you are, because there's some of you out there who already serve a lot of people. There's some of you out there who are really good people. You're helping folks and you just need to make a few changes. And there's some of you out there who are so selfish. You would not give Jesus water on a hot day. 
Gee, that's Jesus. He can, he can get his own water. And a lot of you think that you're not selfish. I'm going to tell you a little test I used to do when I used to date. If I go to a chick's house and her car was parked in the middle of the, of the garage, mm, I was a selfish person. Nice. They can be kind, but they were really, really selfish. Just a little tip for you guys. Um, let me get in the chat room. Let's see what's going on. Uh, let's see. Whoa. What's up, honey bunny? What's going on? Health before wealth. What's up? Patches 301. What's up, Catherine? Happy holidays. Archangel Zola. Michael Watley. What's going on? Johnny Walton. What's up? Tanya. What's going on? Happy holidays. Jasmine. What's up? Mood Motivation Music, what's up? CJ, CZ, good, CZ, uh, CZ, CZ, good evening. What's up, Malcolm Brown? What's up, Short Change, Archangel? Oh, you got to do your thing when you're single. Uh, essentially, people have set up the whole dynamic of you get out of high school, you get out of college, you instantly get married and you build. No, you build before you get in that situation. You, you got to do it. What's up, Davida Brown? So true. I am single to stay focused, hustle, and grind. And, and you know, because the thing is, starting a business, it ain't for the faint at heart. Starting a business, hustling ain't for sissies. I'm probably going to do that shirt again. What's up, Jonathan Phillips? Corey Solomon? Demetra? Uh, Malachi? How do you get that mindset? First thing you must do if, well, I'll tell you honestly how I got my mindset. I was literally stripped of everything that I knew everything that I thought was true. And I was forced to confront the truth that a lot of these things are just lies. Work hard, show up on time, do the right thing. You No, that's not true. Uh, be good to everybody. No, that's not true. Uh, there's just so many fundamental truths that I took as truths. And then I had them all thrown in my face. They're like, these, these aren't true, dude. They're not true. So how do you get that mindset if you're like living a fat and posh life? You're going to have to get rid of some stuff. You're going to have to play these mental games. If you got $50,000 a year, you're going to have to act like you're living on 15 and get creative. You're going to have to force yourself. You're going to have to come out your comfort zone. Our change, there are rare occasions where other half stay on board with their spouse's dreams. Very rare. Short change, true. But my ex lost weight, changed to die, and became religious after that. <laughs> I have seen that so many times. I'm like, when you were with him or when he was with her, you were a bum. But all of a sudden, now you are Sam Smooth now. You got a new wardrobe. you getting groomed up. I'm like, wait a minute. Who, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> oh, man. What's up, Donovan? Uh, oh, yeah, Broke, Broke Dick Danny and Penless Priscilla are real. Oh, yeah, I, I, that's why I built this whole thing on. What's up, Wild Jones? Honey Bunny, the best revenge is success. And it is, and it's not because um, you get to rub it in their face, because I've experienced that recently. The best revenge is success is because you're so busy working on your success you ain't even thinking about them truly and honestly. You are not thinking about them. They don't even come to mind. And that, when you get in that space and you start getting your groove, you get your grind, you get your hustle on, it's a beautiful thing. Definitely long term. Erica Williams, straight, no lie, running 13-1 in a month because of breakup. Signed up with CrossFit and running group. <laughs> I'm going to... I mean, I'm going to put it up here. It's like, look at her. She went, I mean, she didn't just go from, I mean, look. <laughs> I mean, let's see. Where's, uh, no, I mean, let's see. Where is it? Where? Where is the one where she is really, I mean, that was some serious. She had a chip on her shoulder. There, there is no, there is no doubt about it that that whatever happened, 
it changed something in her because I think this was like, you know, five years ago or six years ago, and she has not gained that weight back. I mean, it is real. The chip on the shoulder is real. What's up, Derek? What's up, uh, regular web guy, Leroy? Derek Brown, Dade South, Erica Watson. Thank you, Mr. High Profile. This dude bakes. I love your name. What's up? DJ Slink, I'm making a lot of money with eBay, but I don't know what to do with the money or what the next step to build, to build an automatic business. Uh, what you do, and this is something that a lot of resellers don't do. You're making a lot of money, right? Look at what you're doing to make that money in times at times three, four, five, or six, and you will be amazed at what you can do. Uh, just had a conversation about how the myopic everyone views with time with a Time Warner clerk. There were people that were making payment checks at the at the machine. Oh, that's funny. Erica Watson, there's no more humble for starting from the bottom. What's up, Lamo? That's true. Joshua Hill, I heard wealth that doesn't last more than two generations. Let's talk about that. Unstructured wealth doesn't last more than two generations. The Mars family, right? Those billionaires that sell candy bars, they started like, you know what? Let me don't misspeak. Let me go to our friend Google. When did Mars candy start? Uh, 1920. So we're about five, six generations in. Uh, okay. I got to be more specific. These rappers, Jacqueline Mars, she's worth 28 billion. She's up. So when you have wealth that is i didn't show y'all okay there we go when you have wealth that is structured and what this means is that whoever started the company has enough sense to realize that his children cannot keep it going on they go out you get the board of directors they get trustees they do whatever they need to do where the company can survive them so Unstructured wealth is where someone starts a company, he doesn't groom his children, he doesn't realize his children are stupid and cannot run it, and when he dies, the business dies. But if you have the ability to set up, like Warren Buffett, when Warren Buffett goes, Berk Berkshire Halfway is going to still keep going. They're going to be like, hey, we miss him, but it's, they still going to keep going. So you got to understand when you say that, that is not a um, thing for everybody. That's for people, you know, someone goes out like A.G. Gaston, first one of the first millionaires, black millionaires in the world. And his legacy went on. But after those few people left, then it just kind of collapsed. Let me see. Let me go to A.G. Gaston. Uh, if y'all didn't know, we'll get into a little history right here. This was a really smooth dude. He set up insurance companies, banks, and everything. Um, Gaston published a memoir in 1968. I actually used to go to the AG Gaston Boys Club in Birmingham. I never went into anything with the idea of making money. I thought of doing something, if it can, and if it would come up and make money, I never thought of trying to get rich. I want you to think about that. A.G. Gaston served a lot of people. That's where the money came from. Wow, he died at 103. Have you noticed how a lot of rich people seem to make it a long time? He left behind insurance. Uh, his net worth was estimated to be worth more than, let me put that there, for all of these folks who think black folks can't do anything. $130 million at the time of his death. Hundred and thirty million. Uh, Gaston, I mean, he was a he was a bad brother. Gaston posted five thousand bail for Dr. Martin Luther King. Cause see, another thing that you know, and I'm going to speak on the whole thing with the Hoteps. During the Civil Rights Movement, everybody was in the movement. If you were a banker, a doctor, it didn't matter. 
you were in the movement with that janitor. Now we have the hoteps. We have these people over here, these people over here, these people over here, all trying to get a piece of the action versus coming together and working together. That's why I think a lot of that stuff's going to fail. But I digress. But check out A.G. Gaston. Bad, bad dude. Very bad dude. That's most stocks, the morning dump. Look at you, Glennis, and notice them. All right, I notice a lot of stuff. I just don't talk about it. Remember, I mentioned Bitcoin on this channel long before all these crypto experts popped up. I bought my stuff in 2010. I was like, it's eight cents. What? Let me drop a dollar on some Bitcoin. I mean, one of the things is... Um, yeah, and this is part of my education. I'm not going to just put out stuff. I'm going to be like, clear, look, look, I'm not a cryptocurrency expert. Actually, there's not that many because it only recently started. Because if you look at the few, the, the few people who got on Bitcoin early, it's less than 50, 60 people. And all of a sudden, and then you got some more people who are more humble because you got like people, yeah, I got in Bitcoin early, you know, when it was 850. I'm like, fool, I got it when it was eight cents. What are you talking about, you early? Uh, my grandpa owned a juke joint and then last, but the houses and the land he bought did. Ooh. Visions of Bitcoin. What's up? Uh, yeah, the tax refund ballers, they're going to be on it. Uh, Jonathan, we don't talk about careers here. We talk about building businesses. So, I don't know. Uh, let's see. It jumped on me. Uh, let's see. Erica Williams, that's long money for your hustle. Hmm. Oh, Dalen Break, because they're making, all right, it's a pump and dump. And when I say it's a pump and dump, the fundamentals of Bitcoin are still valid. But what happened is they got hijacked by institutional investors. So what they do, and let me go ahead, I'm going to do a video on my other channel, but I'm going to just say, since Bitcoin is unregulated, and let's use this word unregulated, they're doing things with Bitcoin that they can't do in the stock market. Because uh, another trend I've noticed is every three, four months, this is when it takes this big dip. What they do is pump it up, pump it up, and then when it gets real high, they dump it on the suckers, I mean, excuse me, newbie investors, and take their profits. What's up, Joshua? What's up, Arden? What's up, Mika? Gandalf? AKW Beats? Monique? I park, on, I park one side. <laughs> Uh, Artim Artimento Malolano. Okay. This is actually a good question. Any creative or unique business ideas you would think would be in fire in 2018? If you start a business creating those mud flaps for trucks and stuck with it, it can make you a million dollars. I'm going to prove this to you. Uh, one of the things you got to stop looking for is... Do you know that hedge funds and um, capital venture funds do not invest in new technologies? They invest in what's known and common, and they, they make it better. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's see. Now, everybody has seen this. You've seen them all over the place. Now, Great Dane makes trailers, all right? Not very sexy. Not over the top. Uh, let's see. Um, when would they, let's see. Great Dane, when? All right. Now, Great Dane trailers, typically referred to simply as Great Dane in Chicago, started in the 1900s. 
Now, everybody here who has seen a truck with Great Dane trailer behind it, raise your hand. They started in the 1900s. Think about that. They make trailers established in 1900 by J.P. Wetless and T.H. McMillan as the Savannah Blowpipe Company. And I'm showing you this because you need to stop thinking of hot and trendy. If you want to get wealthy in America, you need to pick something that is known, that is common, and provide outstanding service, make it better, and this is why. One of the reasons Bitcoin is having such a hard prime is it's too new. It's just too new. I've sit down, I've actually talked to people in cafes and stuff, and I ask them, and just like a lot of people, and this is something they say. You ask the average people who are not trying to make speculative profits. That's what criminals use. Bitcoin has a stigma that many people are uneducated because it was used for that, but still it was used for many good purposes. But that stigma is still there. And because of that stigma, a lot of older folks are not going to use it. That's going to be one of the little hiccups. But one of the things to get wealthy in America, like my boy Frank, he owns a car wash. Seven figures after taxes. You can, There's this place all, all about bunt. It's a, it's, all they make are cakes. They have six or seven varieties of cakes. They have a retail shop. Cookies. Stop thinking hot. Stop thinking trendy. Find a business that you can serve a lot of people around for a long time. And you will consistently make money. But that was a good question. Uh, mood motivation. Facts. You need resources to help have a successful marriage. Stay single until you build those resources. Pretty much. Because I can tell you, I was married and I had a point, and I didn't understand this because, you know, we never went homeless. There were some times there just wasn't a lot of money there. But I kept them fed and housed but this shit was hard uh arden bolden become a member of hustle camp we'll talk about that in a minute well bitcoin is not useless but the thing is because of transaction fees and the scaling problems it's hard to use and it's expensive to use uh, Demetrius Smith, I'm in a relationship and my partner's mindset is no where mine is. He works more than me and I have more money than he does. What's up, Q4GC? Thanks. What's up, Leslie? What's up, Lauren Hazel? Uh, someone in the comments can help you, Mika. Uh, Carnegie would be one. I got laid off from my job last year. Tis the season for layoffs. Uh, let's see. I, I'm not going to mention names because what they'll do is come hijack the channel and we'll just start infighting. You ever notice how a lot of these community activist channels sooner or later start fighting with each other when they should all be working together? It's amazing. Uh, the Wild Jones Report, rarely here. Oh, Mr. Gaston was a monster. That's funny. Lauren Hayes, a Warren Buffett company, is extremely well organized. They would definitely be around after he gone. That was a big concern of his. As it should be. Because cause you got to understand, Warren has, Warren has been making millions of dollars since the 40s. He's past all that, trying to come up, trying to get money. He's thinking like, what's my legacy going to be? In 2010, I was chasing holes at the bar. I was broke to Danny. Uh, we're, we're talking about the money mindset here. More deposits. What's up? Uh, Eric and Nicole, the sip roll. I mean, a lot of people just going to avoid Bitcoin for that. Tony Brown. Yes, Greg Dane. My dad that retired from driving. I always went with him. And I'm very familiar with anything in the truck driving business. 
Uh, see that you can make big money in landscaping if you offer full service like custom irrigation services and maintenance. Uh, once again, if you start a business that is known, like, okay, here's one of the things that makes sales hard. And this is one of the problems that we had at Rent-A-Crate, which Michael Shanley and Mason Autry handled beautifully. We had a product that we had to educate the customer that they needed. All right, so let's look at proportionally. So you're spending 50% of your time educating people. Whereas if you take a product that is known, you're spending no time educating your people and you can spend 100% of your time marketing and selling your product. When this new this wow. I mean, think about it. You ever notice like some of the biggest t-shirt brands? It's just plain. It's just a little thing. Some of the shoes, plain. Because the thing is, people already know what they are and you don't have to explain it to them. When you got to explain it, because like, all right, let's take about, because uh, you'll see about it and I'll tell you about it. I am going to start a whole new thing called Super Credit. And for those of you in Hustle Camp, you already got the courses. But I'm branding super credit. I'm going to start this Facebook page because that blew my mind how well that course sold. I didn't have to push it. Not that hard. It was just like, so I'm like, oh, why? Because a lot of people know what credit repair is. They know they need. It's a real easy sale because people already know what it is. But when you got to explain some golly gee wild whiz stuff to people, they will not buy or use it. Uh, Dream Act 1969 won't be long until the world's governments either regulate Bitcoin and attempt to seize it and say it's drug money. Too late. That's already happened. Let me show you something. It's already happened. This is why and I'm going to get into some other stuff. Uh, Silk Road Convictions. <laughs> All right. Let's get into this. You see, a lot of people who get into Bitcoin, they really do not study the history of it. Silk Road website founder loses appeal of a conviction and a life sentence. They made an example of him. Now, I'm going to put something else up next to it. All right, so... Muammar Gaddafi, who has nothing to do with America, he was going to put his country's money on the gold standard. And he ended up dead. Silk Road, death of Muammar Gaddafi. Silk Road. I'm doing this for a reason. Because there's a lot of people out there who are uneducated who actually think that the governments of the world United States government, we kill Gaddafi. Let's be real about it. And China are going to let this trillions dollar currency evolve and be used without no intervention. Yet they killed Gaddafi, who was just going to put his country's money on the gold standard. Not anyone else's. His country. And he got he's dead. Silk Road website, this guy, he got massive uh, pushback. He's a young guy. He's going to spend the rest of his life in jail. Uh, let's see. So y'all, all of you, yeah, Bitcoin, you can't, you can't trace it. None of this transactions. Here's something else. Any exchange that you sign up for that is that takes U.S. currency has to abide by SEC, all of these regulations. That's why a lot of foreign exchange do not take the dollar. Now, do you know there are people who have some of these Chinese exchanges? Chinese exchange closed up and took their Bitcoin. Why? It's unregulated. We can do what we want. There are no rules. It's the wild, wild west. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. But once again, people don't do research. So, you know, a lot of folks like get into a foreign exchange. Like, I'm not doing that because there's no recourse. And they can literally shut down, take your money, and skip along their way. Uh, a lot of exchanges have been hacked for millions of dollars of Bitcoin. But, hey, you know, 
But a lot of folks are not doing their research investing in this. Currently, I have no money in anything. So that's already happened, dude. Good deal, good uh, Gunji. Yep, I don't want to spend time convincing you what I, I chair is. I really convince you why my chair is better than other chairs you sat on and how satisfied you once will be. Pretty much. What's up, vlogs? Uh, Vincent Prospers, what do you offer for someone with a service business like a recording studio? 30 days to 2500 Actually, Drake, no, they're not. See, this is one of the things you got to stop uh, spreading these kind of things. Let me let me show you an independent artist. Let's see. Ah, I'm spelling his name. What? Oh, I know what I, I'm spelling this name. Here we go. This dude is independent. He makes millions of dollars a year. There are so many artists that we don't who are not household brands, brands that make, you know, for someone 26, 31, making 500,000, 1.2, 3, 4 million a year consistently. Let's see. How did he get in the He's got a clothing brand going on. He's got some other stuff. So, no, no. The artists who know how to manage their money and build businesses, there's one guy, I remember, he came into the T-Mobile store, and he had a brand new Mercedes. And he, and he asked me to come check out his phone. And he, he walked in the store. He was high. Left his car on. Left it running. He didn't care. And I can't remember his name, but this was like in the 90s. Dude is still making money. The the artists who are no good, yeah, they probably catching it. But, uh, oh, Bitcoin is very traceable. Every Bitcoin transaction is recorded in the general ledger. And people think because it's just numbers, it's not traceable. <laughs> Pretty much mood motivation. That's funny. Now, Lauren Hazel, we got at least two cases in New York for, for in New York for insider trading dealing with Bitcoin, and another case of Bitcoin and state tax. Yep, Tech Nine is a great another great example. I like one again. What's the thing is, um, Bitcoin's not going to disappear. But it is not the get rich scheme that many people believe it to be. I think it's going to crank down to probably two or three grand. It's going to continue to grow slowly after that because now regulations come in. But all this money was being made because it was unregulated and it was being manipulated. Pump and dump. It was funny. Uh, I, once again, I don't have any money in anything right now. Because, once you know, let's talk about the money mindset. You need to invest in your business because let's look at investments. Unless you're a trader, unless you got a ferocious appetite for risk, you should be investing long term, which is buying the coins that show a promise of turning a return 10, 15, 20 years from now. And I know a lot of people are anti ripple because it's centralized. Oh, God, no. It's, no, no, no. And I, I, I mean, I want you to think about this. Bitcoin was created by someone we don't know who if they're even real. I think Bitcoin was created by probably a group of four or five programmers. And they just put that stuff out there because the story sounds so mysterious. AKW Beats. I'm a producer. Sell most of my beats online to independent artists. Ryan Leslie's a smart brother. Graduated from Harvard. Uh, Artemito, would you purposely move into a wealthy zip code for mindset and environment purposes? Yes, I actually did that. When I started making money, I got out. I used to live in Stone Mountain. I used to live in East Lake. When I got money, I moved to one of the, 
top five wealthiest zip codes in Georgia. Because once again, since I'm socially aware, when I leave my neighborhood, I know these things. Like around here, you see BMWs, i8s, Ferraris. You see them all over the place. You you would think they're like candy. Thirty minutes outside this, I go up to Marietta. I don't see that. So I purposely stay in this bubble because it keeps my mental right. But yeah, I would definitely move. It's 50-50 with music artists. Major artists hate to pay. Yes, they do. Right now, Lotto may be a safer bet for the uneducated masses. Well, see, this thing, there's not a lot of people who actually own Bitcoin. Maybe 1% of the population actually is involved in Bitcoin. 1%. And you see what happened with just 1% of the people being in. They, they reached uh, long transaction times, scaling issues. Why 1%? Let's say... 50%, let's say 10% of the population jumped on Bitcoin next year. It would crash. Uh, short change. Once again, uh, like I said, I'll do the new channel. We'll be educated together. Oh, definitely. This whole thing, it was just this one dude. But once again, it's great marketing. It's awesome marketing. Speaking of marketing, and we're going to get into this. Uh, I'm going to just keep that up there because that that's just I, I every time I watch that video, I'm like, he must have broke her heart because she got some serious like I, I'm just put some stank on this. All right. For those of you who care. Let's see. Let me get in here. Uh, the second, because I know people be partying and stuff. I don't want you to miss out. But the second of January, I'm raising the price of Hustle Camp to five thousand dollars there will be a payment plan no worries so if you want to get in you can go below the video drop your 2500 instant as instant instant access and you start learning so what i'm going to do let's just do that i'm going to create 40 courses in 2018 let me say that again i'm going to create 40 courses in eight, 2018 so everybody that is already in the hustle camp is going to get them. And you will have immediate access to the courses. Only thing that you will not get is if people who pay in full will get to come to the live experiences. If you're on the payment plan, you will not get to come to the live experiences until you pay in full. So that's how we're going to do that. Plus, there's going to be some more perks coming. I'm just saying. So if your money is funny and you don't know what to buy, start with the superior mindset bundle. And I put something in there to help you make a little money so you can move to the next level. If your credit is funky, super credit, how to fix your credit, grow another turn. This is going to be wild because there's some more stuff I'm going to put in there. So if your credit is funny, get that. It will enhance your credit. It will fix your credit. Um, how to start a business from scratch and move to the next level. This is all about starting businesses, flipping products. And this is going to go up in price because I did the live experience about this and I, I realized there's a lot of stuff that I left out. So I got to put that in there. So that's going to enhance. So if you want to give up, be a part of that, you need to buy that before because everything is going up in a second. I don't know what I'm taking this up to, but it's going up in price. Uh, yeah, that's already there. And, you know, we got Hustle Camp. And if you got Hustle Camp at 2500 you get everything. Everything, including the 40 new courses, plus some other surprises that I'm going to do. Plus, you get to come to the live experiences. So all of that information is below the video. Because uh, I'm going to do a special money mindset course because... One of the things I learned from talking to people and doing these live experiences, I got to get deeper. At first, I was thinking, you know, people didn't want the details and stuff and just, you know, five minute video, 10 minute video, give them the nitty gritty and get them started. Uh, that really doesn't work because there was uh, someone who saw some on the video. And then when we got deeper into it, they were like, oh, you can't do it that way. So I need to get deeper. And a lot of the topics that I talk about. I'm going to break them down into courses and I'm going to get very, very specific and very much on point. So 
that's what's coming in 2018. We're going to have a good, good time. So if you want those courses and things, they're below the video and the payment plan. Once again, you get on the payment plan, even when I increase the price, you can still have access at that price. So that is it. Thanks for sharing your Saturday with me. I'm about to bounce and uh, I'll probably be back tomorrow because there's some more stuff I want to talk to. But essentially, you got to get the right mental. It is so important. You just I can't even emphasize how important the mental is. All right. So be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you good people later.